Hello my lovelies, welcome to my little cottage by the sea, the place where I love to stitch and craft my way to a vintage inspired and sustainable lifestyle. I've been spending time in the archives of my college library again and I have found another treasure that I am just dying to share with you. Whilst I was looking at some of the amazing books that they hold in the archive, I found this Butterick sewing pattern counter book from November 1949. So I thought, seeing as it is November and seeing as I do love to time travel, it would be really fabulous to have a little flip through and to share some of the beautiful patterns that are in this book. Once again, I'm very thankful to the really lovely librarians at my college where I do teach sometimes for letting me go in and film. And because I am filming at the college location, there are some issues with lighting and I have a handheld camera. I have done my absolute best to try and film in as steady a way as possible, but sometimes my excitement does get away from me and I've also had to voice over this after the fact so I hope that none of that is going to be particularly detrimental there's still so much inspiration in this book from 1949 so without further ado let's jump in our time machines and head back to 1949 November and see what sort of sewing patterns we should be buying for our handmade wardrobes. This Butterick sewing pattern counter book from 1949 would have been in all haberdashers and just like we do today we can peruse the various sections. This one starts with the sort of the featured design and is very beautifully illustrated, really lovely colours, still very vibrant even after all these years. I thought this particular dress, the two versions of, was very lovely. It's got this sort of interesting twisted tie sort of neckline which you can see in a little more detail here. I thought it was a really interesting feature design detail and a lovely beret never ever goes out of style and what I call these sort of floating fastenings traditionally in the olden days you wouldn't have had a centre back seam to put zips and fastenings in that is a, a particularly new invention. This dress was lovely with the ruched bodice and some very lovely shoes in this catalogue, although not as detailed and beautiful as I saw in the Vogue edition from 1937. One of the things you really notice as you look through this catalogue is the Dior effect, as I'm going to call it, not terribly originally, I must say. But 1947 saw the premiere, the launch of the Christian Dior New Look, as it was named by the editor of Harper's Bazaar. And I think you can really, really see the difference in silhouette here. It really does start to make a difference. There's a much more nipped in waist and a longer silhouette. I do think this green and purple with the swag on the front and the it's not actually dolman sleeves they're set in sleeves but with a very strong shoulder line is really very very 1940s late 1940s very traditional of that time and it's interesting to me the sort of softness of a lot of the shirts and the sort of more rounded shoulder line which is also an influence from Christian Dior. I thought the dart placement on this dress, copious darts going on here, was really very interesting. And everything is creating this very feminine, very idealised silhouette. And it harkens back to the 1700s, early 1800s, and the Empress Josephine, who Christian Dior was very, very obsessed by. He was looking very much at old-fashioned silhouettes here and the feminine and sort of merging a historical silhouette with modern femininity. These all look very Christian Dior to me. Probably going to say that a lot throughout this video. It strikes me looking through these pages that the clothes on offer were very much more suiting or two-piece based 
these lovely ladies are being serenaded and I really feel like I need my own band to serenade me wherever I go. I don't often look quite as put together as these lovelies, but maybe if I had this catalogue and these patterns and could make all these outfits, I absolutely would. These all seem to be more outerwear influenced. So rather than having, say, tea dresses and then jackets or two-piece dress sets that actually look like dresses, these are all a little bit more foundational, as in they've got more structure, more tailoring, I suppose, is the word I'm actually looking for. I thought this dress was really beautiful and it's got this sort of texture on it, which I'm thinking would be some kind of moiré, which is like a water-stained taffeta, but it also sort of looks like an animal print. There's lots of big collars going on, I think, and interesting shapes around the neck, the décolletage, which would be an influence from this historical fashion that was very much in vogue, no pun intended, at this particular time. Lots of the dresses have all these details and statement design details and they sort of imply quite a lot of under-rigging going on. I'm not sure that they have got lots of under-rigging or corsetry within the dresses. This is still the time of waspies and girdles and so on. But the fabrics do seem heavier to me than even the autumn winter catalogues from just 10 years ago, say. One of the things that I'm noticing about all of these designs is that quite a few of them, most of them, seem to have this lowered or dropped armhole. There are a lot of dolman type sleeves, even though they are still set in, but they are giving this sort of slightly bat wing effect. I thought this shirt waist dress, if it is a shirt waist dress, was really interesting with those pleats at the front and the lovely shawl collar. There was something really nice about the proportions of this and I really liked all the colours of these. Of course, there's black and pink together, which will always be my favourite. A lot of these dresses in this particular catalogue are not massively appealing to me and it was interesting to realise that actually my interest and my main focus of fashion is really the latter part of the 30s going into the early 40s and I do like some of the later 40s going into the 50s. This sort of peplum thing was interesting but I'm not sure why it just sort of disappears into those seams. That would possibly look quite strange when it was moving on the body and that's one of the things that you do have to think of when you're looking at these flat illustrations for sewing patterns they look beautiful and of course they're rendered incredibly beautifully but actually you've got to imagine them being worn and moving and actually being placed on the body the dress section is the biggest section of this catalogue but I have to say as I've already said that a lot of this does seem to be more suiting than actual dresses. When I think of dresses, I do think of those tea dresses. But all of these dresses are for a wide variety of occasions, from cocktail hour to trips to the shop and so on. There seems to be less definition within the range of actual occasions. The Vogue 1937 was really very obvious for you know the what the occasion was for the dresses but this one doesn't seem to really have that much variation everything is either a very fit and flare or a fit and fit silhouette but we do have some really beautiful dresses some very summery still even though this is for November but then designs would have been carried through for quite a long time just as they are now in today's catalogues I thought the black and the green dress here were really rather lovely and so was this with the necktie and those chevron stripes so there's lots of ideas and takeaways in this catalogue. The next section is the teenagers and I have to say that I can't really tell the difference between the teenager section, particularly, 
and the one that we've just seen. I mean, there is a tiny difference. These would all be girls going to secretarial college or college. And I really did think of the film Mona Lisa's Smile with Julia Roberts. I haven't seen it in years and years, but I remember really liking the clothes in there. These lovely ladies are just rendered slightly more youthful, but actually the garments, the clothes are pretty much what their mothers or older sisters would be wearing. And you have to remember that this is just on that cusp of the the sort of introduction, I suppose, of the teenager of rock and roll that was going to happen in the 50s and then going into the 60s when suddenly teenagers were really a thing. There was a clear definition between childhood, then teenager, then adulthood, whereas here it just seemed to be child and then a sort of more muted version of an adult's outfit and you didn't really have this sort of freedom of the teen. This here is all the evening wear and it's not really looking particularly dramatic to me. I have to say that there aren't very many designs here that I feel are incredibly breathtaking unlike the Vogue 1937, there's lots of beautiful evening wear. Here is a lovely wedding dress as well and then some other very pretty designs. I thought these were rather stunning though and I really loved this sort of waterfall type skirt with an underskirt so you could play around with having lace with a an overlay of some other kind of fabric. So these were really rather beautiful and that burgundy one there or claret wine one is very, very Christian Dior. And then you have ones with details on the back. So they do become more dramatic and more of a statement as we go through. This is very typical of the late 40s and actually one of my favourite designs in the whole of the catalogue because I do love a dolman with a peplum and here we're seeing a bit of a repeat of some of the designs which seems a bit of a shame they seem to just be sort of filling up the catalogue and then a lovely wedding dress communion dress what have you and then we get on to larger sizes and maternity when they say larger sizes really what they're referring to is older women matrons and nans and so on something that you're not really allowed to be you're not allowed to age and you're not allowed to show that you are with child as we will go on to see. I'm not sure how exciting any of these designs are which is probably why I'm flicking through them but these maternity clothes here are really rather interesting. I'm not sure that I can actually tell where the baby is hidden under this oversize but where's the baby there? I don't really know. Interesting however. Loved these um, knickerbockers here that you could tie and and resize and then you've got a, a lovely bed jacket here to wear to cover the bump to be comfortable in your home. Then we move on to suiting and jackets and outerwear and to me a lot of this looks exactly like the dresses that we've seen in that first section. In fact I'm sure some of these were actually illustrated there. I do really love the suiting of this time though this very Parisian, very nipped in waists and longer silhouette, very much influenced here by the bar jacket that Dior had premiered, which created the the idea of the new look and that A-line. He was really the first person to do this because up until that point, the silhouette hadn't looked like this. I think the tailoring of this time going into the 50s those sort of suits that you would see on Marilyn Monroe or Jane Russell were really incredible and they really did make women look incredibly elegant and glamorous. There's some lovely, very traditional jacket patterns actually. And then lots and lots of coats and you've got lots of these swing coats which would work over very flared skirts. We're not really at that time of the most flared skirts that you would get. This coat here was of particular interest to me because it's raining cats and dogs, not quite literally, but 
I am very much in need of some kind of rain attire because it literally hasn't stopped raining. You know, that lady's running towards what I can only assume might be a public house. I feel the same way when I see a public house on the horizon and make a very quick run for it. There's some fabulous suiting here in really glorious colours that are absolutely perfect for November and the festive season and lots of lovely chartreuse zingy yellows throughout this catalogue. I love the proportions of these jackets, the swing coats and capes with really elegant gloves. They really are incredibly elegant and refined. Another thing that I'm noticing with this catalogue is that unlike the Vogue from previous years and like catalogues that you have now there aren't so many patterns that come with options in so you are buying a coat a cape a jacket a suit and so on rather than a set with a couple of options I think that's quite interesting and I wonder if that's because things are becoming a little bit more affluent the economies picked up and as we go into the 50s with all the sort of technological advances and the good times rolling that that is why people aren't so concerned with getting bang for their buck they're quite happy to buy one pattern and make something with that one pattern whereas having whole sets is a common thing before this and then today really love that little cape there an astrakhan cape i did just show my patrons how to pattern cut a really lovely little cape like that. There's lots of very nice hats and accessories going on in this section. And then we come to the separates. Something that I'm finding really interesting in this catalogue, which you'll see as we go through, is that there are lots and lots of skirt options. In the 1937 catalogue, there were only really a few, or you got them as part of a dress suit set but here there are loads the dicky which is a word that never fails to make me giggle but a very good idea nonetheless you've got lots of skirt options here really like that kind of brocadey one and not so many blouses on offer in here which I found quite a surprise I thought this was really lovely the details on that skirt the sort of placement of the pleats and shaping there are evening styles and day styles here. Lots of them with that dolman sleeve and that lowered armhole. Not so many with really interesting sleeve details. That was much more of a 30s thing. Something I realised as I was looking through this catalogue was that I think when it comes to the later 40s going into the 50s, I'm much more of a separates person here you've got the full circle skirt, which becomes such a wardrobe staple going into the 40s. When it comes to the dresses and some of the suiting, I'm really a little bit nonplussed. But when it comes to lots of the skirts available and the separates in this particular era, I do think they're incredibly beautiful it was around this time as I looked through the catalogue that I started to think, but where are the trousers? I haven't seen a single pair of trousers at all so far. This particular skirt style is probably my favourite of all time and I wear full circle skirts pretty much as a, a wardrobe everyday item and they are sort of what I wear to relax and be casual in. There are lots of lovely shirts on offer, blouses on offer and then we get into accessories and these rain hoods are absolutely perfection. I really do need some kind of rain cap, hat, whatever you want to call it. Some lovely hats here as well and then gloves and then what I was calling bum aprons which they're absolutely not, they're peplums and tie on peplums so that you can change up the look of your many, many different skirt patterns that are on offer in this catalogue. Not bum aprons, but that is somehow seared in my mind. 
Then we get into nightwear and lingerie. And really, there's not that many exciting things in this catalogue in terms of nightwear and lingerie. Everything's a little bit dowdy and a little bit frumpy. And I really love the lingerie of the 1930s because it's so sensual and sinuous and decadent and sexy. Although sexy and bloomers is absolutely the thing. These housecoats dressing gowns are incredibly lovely. I can imagine Dita Von Tees in this quilted number while she's showing people MTV around her crib. And then this house dress is really lovely. You've got the zip up the front and frills and those lovely flutter sleeves. What is not to love? Then some aprons and artist smocks and sort of activity appropriate garments at the back. Not quite such a feature in this catalogue, but they are here for various occasions, things that you need to be doing and lots and lots of aprons and things to do chores in because as we come out of the war and go into the 50s, that really is where the woman should be. She should be in the kitchen tied to the sink and then every now and then she should put on a nurse's uniform and soothe the brow of her pipe smoking husband. The next section is children's and I skip this, although I did think that these costumes here were very sweet. Look at that pussycat. The clown's rather terrifying though. And this is sort of holiday wear and so on. There's only one swimming costume in here. I've seen this pattern come up on eBay before, so I may have a look for it again. I just like that sort of stripe fabric rather than the actual pattern and here are the trousers and these are the only trousers slacks that are in the entire catalogue for women and then we go from that into ice skating because of course we're all doing that and then we're going into costumes which are really quite problematic in terms of their cultural appropriation I do like that devil though uh, if I ever saw anybody dressed up as that penguin I would laugh myself silly Lots more cultural appropriation, but I'm going to ignore that and feast my eyes on the Father Christmas there because we are heading into the festive season. I hope you've enjoyed this flip through of this vintage treasure. The best way to get vintage inspiration and to learn as much as you can about fashion history is to look at original sources and I feel so grateful that the lovely librarians yet again let me go and film in the library archive. I hope you've enjoyed this flip through and that you've found some inspiration for your own sewing plans and projects. Do let me know in the comments below. I really appreciate you taking the time to spend the time with me here in my little cottage by the sea. As always, I hope that wherever you are in the world, you are keeping very, very safe and well. Till next time. Bye.